Hey everybody, how you doing today? Mark here, standing in my kitchen, ready to make dinner yet again tonight. Uh, this is the first thing that we're actually gonna repeat, and technically it's not a repeat, okay? It is a meatloaf recipe. I've done a meatloaf before. It was a very simple, basic meatloaf, and that was, what, a couple years ago now. But tonight, it's a different recipe. I actually call it a three-meat meatloaf because we are using ground beef, ground pork and ground veal. So yeah, three different meats. And I've got everything all set out on the counter, ready to go. So all we gotta do is get you over here and show you what I got. All right, so in this little container is a low sodium breadcrumb. You do not have to use a low sodium breadcrumb if you do not want to. And you can also use flavored breadcrumbs if you want to. But Jen is eating with us tonight. She has instructed me to use the low sodium breadcrumbs. These she makes by herself. She makes a low sodium bread, slices it up, dries it out in the oven, puts it in the food processor and makes breadcrumbs out of it. We need three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs. I got some milk here, 2%, skim, 1%, doesn't really matter, whole milk. We need one third of a cup. Here I've got ketchup. I need half a cup, of, half a cup of ketchup. I got red wine vinegar, only need an eighth of a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. And then I need a tablespoon of brown sugar. This is all I have to cut up this time. I've got one onion I have to cut up, just a little dice. We're gonna brown that off in a little bit of oil. Here are my three meats, beef, veal, pork. Now the veal package is a two pound package, so I'm gonna have that. I will need three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons of salt. I am gonna leave the, this salt in because it's the first time making the recipe and we're gonna find out how it tastes and everything. I may modify the salt later, you know, when we make it again. Two teaspoons of black pepper, two eggs that I will lightly beat Okay, so yeah, the, the ingredients are really simple and only one thing to chop up. That's awesome. But we are going to brown that onion before we actually add it to everything else. Okay, to start, we're going to measure out our breadcrumbs. See, nice little breadcrumbs that my wife makes there, huh? We're going to need three quarters of a cup. This is a one quarter cup measuring cup, so I need three of them. And I got a one third measuring cup of for my milk. One third cup of milk. And I'm gonna just mix that together with a fork real quick. So there we go, that's what we got. That is the milk and breadcrumb mixture. All right, now I'm gonna measure out my half cup of ketchup. Sorry about that whimpering you're hearing. It's Missy, she's in her pen and she does not want to be in there. So that's about a half cup of ketchup there. Gonna put it in this little tiny bowl here. You know, the recipe only called for an eighth of a teaspoon of the red wine vinegar and that seems a little low to me. So I am actually going to increase it and double it. So a quarter teaspoon of red wine vinegar is what I'm doing. Because that's not a whole heck of a lot. And then finally, I need one tablespoon of brown sugar and I don't have much left in this container. There, one tablespoon of brown sugar. Grab another little fork or a small whisk if you'd prefer. We're just gonna mix that together. Yep, all the uh, all the brown sugar clumps and lumps are all broken apart. Yep, that looks good right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take care of the one thing I have to cut up and that's an onion. Okay, now I'm gonna do just a basic small dice on this. I don't want pieces too big. Ooh, strong onion. I need to work quick on this. There 
here we go. There's one onion ready for the saute pan. I'll put this and the oil down by the pan. Okay, let's get the meat put into the big bowl here. There's my pound of hamburger. All right, so this is the ground veal. I only need one pound of that. All right, am I gonna actually weigh out a pound? No, nope, I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna say that's about half right there. And that's what I'm taking out. All right, so there's my pound of veal. And then this is my pork. Put that in there. And don't forget to grab the little paper that was on the bottom of it. Pardon me while I wash my hands. All right, now to the meat mixture, I am going to add three tables of Worcestershire sauce. There's one, two, and three. Two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons of black pepper. Going to take my eggs, crack them into this bowl, and give them a quick little, quick little mix, a quick little beaten. Pour that in. I'm going to add the um, the breadcrumb milk mixture. All right, now while this sits, we got to go take care of that onion. Okay, so I poured a tablespoon of oil in here. Going to turn that on a medium high heat and just wait for this to get nice and hot. All right, oil's nice and hot. Now, what I'm doing here is actually called a saute. This is not a sweat. I actually want to get these a little bit brown. So do you guys remember the difference between a saute and a sweat? A sweat, you're not wanting to brown the meat or the, the vegetables. You're just wanting to heat them through, release a little bit of moisture and cook them off a little bit. A saute, high heat, hot oil, right away, you're looking for brown coloring and it happens just within a couple of minutes. So look down here and see what's going on. You guys see how how brown that's getting that's what we're wanting i want a little more brown than what's on there right now but it's getting there yeah that looks good i like that that's enough browning don't you think okay to the bowl i'm going to add i should probably actually let this cool down a little bit so i probably should have done this part first all right i'm gonna Use my wooden spoon since that that uh, onion is pretty hot. So I'm just going to use a spoon, just mix it in all together. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any large clumps of meat that don't have ingredients mixed into it. You know what I mean? Or that there's a big ball of of onion sitting not mixed into the other ingredients or the breadcrumbs or whatever. I'm just trying to make sure that it's all mixed in really well. But I don't want to crush it together either. So I'm trying to leave the mixture as loose as possible. Okay, I'm going to say that that's good. Got my loaf pan here. This is one of those neat little uh, meatloaf ones where the perforations on this sl little sleeved area. I'm gonna put on some gloves. These gloves are about three sizes too small for me, but I'll make them work.
<laughs> I'm not used to having a meatloaf fill the pan this much. Okay, so it is quite early yet, so I'm gonna stick this in the refrigerator just to keep it cold. Once I take it out of the refrigerator and I'm getting ready to bake, I'm going to take the, cho the, the chocolate, I'm gonna take the ketchup sauce and I'm gonna brush that on with a pastry brush or a basting brush, whatever you wanna call it. And then we'll stick it in a 350 degree oven for an hour and a half. So refrigerate this, cover it with foil or cling wrap or something, cool. All right, gonna put this in the bottom shelf of the refrigerator. The ketchup can go on the top shelf. So I think this is the first time you guys have seen my new oven. I like it except for that it's all white. You know, our previous oven had a nice black door. The uh, top up here was all black, so it, it wasn't bad, it really wasn't. And in fact, the, uh, the top here was more of like a, a beige cream color, not just pure white. But I like it, it's, it's a nice little oven. The center coil here actually has a heat temperature on it and when it, now the heat temperature does not regulate the uh, burner in any way, but what it's doing is it's making contact with your pot and the stove will sense when it reaches 450 degrees, just the pot. And it will cut off heat to that element until the pot cools down a little bit and then it'll turn the heat back on. It's just a safety feature because oils can spontaneously just combust at that temperature. So they've devised a way to keep your oven or at least your stovetop from starting grease fires. The oven itself is 5.3 cubic feet, which is really nice. It was bigger than our last one. It's a little wider but the oven itself, the total width of the oven is the same. It's the same 30 inches across, but the inside of the oven is much wider. It's much deeper, so we can actually get more in there if we need to. I don't know if it really goes back any farther, maybe a little bit, but not much. But it's also got a lot of cool features on here that I like, and one of them I'm gonna to use today. Let me show you how I'm gonna get it started. Okay, to go with my meatloaf for dinner tonight, I'm gonna to make some instant mashed potatoes. I got my milk, my water, my salt, and my butter all measured out and already in here. Got my dry potato flakes measured out, ready to go. In this little casserole dish is just corn and carrots, a couple of uh, tablespoons of butter, and um, I think it's the garlic herb Mrs. Dash seasoning sprinkled all over it. That will just go in the microwave for about 10 minutes. What I wanna do for my oven though, it's called a delay time on this one here. And I can set it for the time of day I want the oven to turn on. I want it to turn on at 4.30. I'm gonna bake, I'm gonna go up to 350 degrees. That's what I want. So then I start and that's it. So at 4.30, it'll turn on to 350 degrees, and then I can put my meatloaf in the oven. In fact, I can put the meatloaf in the oven right now, and that oven will automatically turn on at 4.30, and then I just need to time out the hour and a half. So let's get the meatloaf ready and get it in the oven. Okay, got my meatloaf out of the refrigerator. I'll just pull that plastic wrap off. And I'm going to baste on that ketchup mixture that we made. All right, that looks pretty good. Now what I can do with this oven is I can put my meatloaf in now because I got that timer set to where my oven will automatically turn on at 430. That's awesome, I love that. Okay guys, so I hit 430 and the PRE that you see on the display here means that it's preheating. So yeah, my oven turned on all by itself. It's gonna warm up to the 350 degrees. It's awesome. Now what I can do too is time my cook. I want it for an hour and 30 minutes. Just like that. There we go. It'll cook for an hour and 30 minutes now. <laughs> I 
I never showed you guys my new sink either, or my new faucet. <laughs> the uh, old one that we had had the control no lever up here at the top center, and we were having a hell of a time getting it to turn off. And one day my son went to go turn it off, and it wasn't shutting off, so I just kept on pushing down harder and harder, and water started spewing out from the uh, little uh, pivot point. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell them, well, just cut off the, you know, get under the sink, cut off the water to the sink, and we'll just buy a new faucet while Jen and I were out shopping that day anyway. So, but this is a uh, Moen brand. It's got the uh, little sprayer attachment here. The button has it to where, you know, stream like that or push the button and you get a nice spray. So that's pretty cool. I like the fact that that is hot when it points up and then when it's pointed down it's cold so i'm able to play with the temperature better than my old one did got a nice high rise neck to it so if i put a big pot in here or something like that it can actually fit under here i mean i don't have a pot like that but in case i did so yeah pretty cool pretty standard uh, i can't remember the actual uh, model name of this i just remember that it's a mowing came with this little uh, soap dispenser which we don't use <laughs> i keep my dish soap there i got hand soap right here so yeah so there's there's my new faucet i was showing off the stove i might as well show off the faucet too right <laughs> all right let's get back to cooking all right guys so with the last 10 minutes to go on the cook time i plugged in a uh insta read thermometer and i've been watching my uh digital readout here and because I used veal, I wanted to make sure that I got the veal done at the proper temperature. So I'm going for a 160 internal temperature. And I'm at 142 with just a few minutes left. So I may end up having to um, extend the cook time just a little bit. You know, this is a new oven to me, so I gotta make sure that I'm doing everything right. That's why I'm actually taking the meat's temperature. And it's a good practice to stay into. You know, of course, when you're working in a commercial kitchen, you're doing it all the time. And when I'm at home, I really don't worry about it too much. So I'm gonna just keep on going until I hit my uh, target temp. Okay guys, so the oven is done. But my meat still quite hasn't reached temperature yet. So I'm going to leave it in the hot oven just to finish cooking off. But what I can do is I can start my vegetables and my potatoes now. And I'm going to go for 10 minutes because they are still frozen somewhat. But I have a lot of them. I have two bags of vegetables. So 10 minutes there. I'm going to start my milk, water, butter, and garlic salt on high and get this up to a boil. I'm gonna pull out the meatloaf now, even though my timer has not, my uh, temperature probe has not gone off. The carryover, uh, it'll keep raising a couple more degrees. So I'm gonna say that it is done. And after the 10 minutes of resting, the juices, uh, the juices of the meatloaf should subside a little bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna let this sit right here for the next 10 minutes. The heat will keep increasing just for a little while and get to my 160 temperature, cause I was only like, maybe like four degrees off. But the meat will have a chance to relax a little bit and reabsorb some of the juices. So that way we don't get a dry meatloaf. Okay, I need to go down there and watch that uh, pot so it doesn't boil over. Okay, potatoes are done. And just a couple more minutes for the vegetables. Okay, my vegetables are done. Sorry guys, I kind of forgot to push the record button. I took my knife, went around the edge and uh, cut it free. And now I'm just running it down the bottom of it. And then 
that should just slide right out just like that that's cool all right let's see how well this thing will slice up because sometimes uh, meatloaf can be i don't know just really crumbly and stuff sometimes they can be really dense oh yeah that's cutting pretty nice i'm getting maybe about a half inch slice There we go. There's a little internal view of the of the meatloaf. Okay, let's eat. Reach up here and get a plate. Now I cut 10 slices off of this. So that means everybody basically gets two. Get some mashed potatoes. I made eight servings of mashed potatoes because between me and Sam alone, that's four servings. <laughs> yeah, Samaya and I really like our mashed potatoes. Then our carrots and corn. Kind of a redundancy on the starches because we have the corn, that's technically a starch. And the potatoes, which is, again, technically a starch. Okay, guys, there you go. That is a great looking meatloaf dinner. Ooh, yeah. Now, before I get into the main course of the meatloaf, I want to check out these potatoes and the uh, corn and carrots. Mm. Instant mashed potatoes, use garlic salt instead of regular salt. Takes it just that little notch up, you know what I mean? And that garlic and herb Mrs. Dash is just wonderful on veggies. Ugh. All right. Let's get into the meatloaf here. All right, first off, I'm glad I used a full quarter teaspoon of vinegar instead of the little bitty eighth of a teaspoon that the recipe originally called for in the uh, ketchup. That, that has a nice little vinegary twing to it. It's not too bad. It's not, you know, super strong or anything like that. That's really quite nice. The texture of the meatloaf is great. I like the different flavors of the meat. You can taste the beef, you can taste the veal, you can taste the pork. It is kind of a jumbled mess, but you can identify the flavors. Good Worcestershire taste in there. I mean, it called for three tablespoons for crying out loud. <laughs> and then, of course, the sauteed onions. Make sure you do that on a high heat. Get them nice and brown. Don't just give them a little, you know, sweat. You know, really brown off those onions. That'll make a world of difference, I think. Mm. The best bites are when you get that little sweet and zesty ketchup bite you know it's sweet from the brown sugar zesty from the from the vinegar that's a that's a nice little ketchup sauce simple too mm. all right so you guys you gotta try this i know i say that with just about every recipe that i make but you got to try this three meat meatloaf it's awesome it really is i think this may end up being our standard meatloaf from now on forget that standard beef and uh, onion soup mix one this is awesome all right thanks for watching guys see you on the road bye